So I would now give the floor to Ashwin, who is uh, talking about his project um, using artificial intelligence to track tropical cyclones. Ashwin, the floor is yours. Thank you. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashwin. I'm currently working on this topic uh, of exploration of deep learning techniques for detection and tracking of tropical cyclones. Uh, my mentors are Linus Magnuson and Pedro Masiel. Uh, we are working quite, uh, we have we arrange meetings like twice, uh, like monthly, and uh, the like the collaboration is going on pretty good. So, yes. So yeah. So the project idea is to the okay. So the tropical cyclones. Tropical cyclones are mainly the complex and the most harmful events that occur on Earth, like the natural disaster. So we need some kind of accurate prediction, which is essential to make reliable models. And these cyclones are located and aggregated into subtypes based on their intensity. Here on the right, I have just added one of the different images uh, obtained from the satellite satellites. So here you have this kind of images that I'm working on. And there used to be a case where people had to manually classify these things, like manually detect the cyclones in these images and then see the intensity and then classify them manually. So. Yes, so the traditional methods used to be this DORA technique, which was mainly based on the enhanced IR methods and the visibility of the satellite images. So these were mainly dependent on the expertise of the users. This was further improved in this object DORA technique, uh, where people started using computer vision algorithms, but not mainly data focused. So these, these algorithms were mainly uh, using techniques from computer vision, but not exactly something in deep learning or machine learning. But still, it was not very useful. Uh, there was further advancement, which is advanced DORA technique. And in that, people started using regression equations, but still there was a 5 to 10% of error uh, in the estimation. So, so main idea here is to have some, since we have a lot of data, so we, there is this idea of using this data and the data intensive deep learning techniques. So uh, here we have basically redefined the task as an object detection task. Uh, recently in 2018, Matsuda et al, they pro performed this task as a classification task where they actually uh, used, so they basically cropped the image into multiple parts. They created a database of all these images and they performed a classification task like classifying the this uh, specific 20 or 20 images into different subtypes. But here we don't plan to do that. We just want to automate the whole process in, at once. So what we are trying to do here is basically just provide one single image, like I mentioned in the previous slide, just provide the one image and just ask the algorithm to detect and classify the cycles. So yes, so the data that we have, we have a variety of, uh, so the data in this variety of cyclone types, so there are, some of them are really well-defined, like 18P, 08S, 20Ps, and many more. But there are actually, there is this issue that there is a huge amount of unnamed ones as well. So these were mainly, so there are many new cyclones being detected, but those are not thoroughly studied and thus they are called unnamed ones. So, so this was the issue, like here first we had like around 40, 45 classes and it was just not feasible to process them all. So after that, we moved to creation of just four major classes and based on the pressure values. So we have defined them as class zero, one, two, and three based on the pressure values. So uh, as you can see here, the class zero is about 1,005, one then class one is 990 to 1,005, 1, class two is 965 to 990, and class three is below 965. Okay, so the data that we have. So we have data from base track database from the 2016 to 2019. What the data pre-processing that we have done is we have basically, we have the center coordinates of the tropical cyclones and we are basically creating bounding box of 20 plus 20 pixels around the, the centers. So in that way, we provide this kind of input to our model and then we expect the model to learn and classify, like detect these cyclones and classify them into different intensities. Uh, from the intensities of the four classes that I just showed on the previous slide. 
Uh, yes. So, okay. So now, so this task is basically a two-stage task. So for in the first stage, we, we hope to like detect and classify the, uh, the cyclones into different categories. So we provide satellite image data as input. We have the annotation information as the centers of the cyclones, which is provided as the labels. We provide this to the retina net architecture or the one of the object detection network that we can use. We have some kind of hyperparameter tuning, which is mainly the eternals of the architecture, which you can check on GitHub. Uh, so I, I'll not go into the details of this. And then we ask the model to perform a regression and classification at the same time. So we want to detect the cyclone and classify it. So, and then we have some kind of train model, so which can be used for the later part of the project. So the later part of the project is mainly to use the model as an inference well. So we provide the satellite image data with a time dimension. So we want to provide it. Okay, so these images are mainly across time. So you, the cyclones are moving across time into different zones and which are mainly called basins. You define the complete map of the world into four basins and the cyclones are moving across these basins. So we, what we want in stage two is to use the model to continuously track and classify the different cyclones. So that's what we go to do in the stage two. So yes, so the current status of the project is, uh, so in the proposal, I had mentioned that I'll be using retina -like architecture. Uh, I started with the retina -like architecture, but uh, there were some issues. So like I mentioned, we had a lot of classes and the data for each class was not too much. Like we had unnamed class one, unnamed class two, for say just 10 to 15 samples, but specified ones like SP0, SP3 for many classes. So there was huge data imbalance and we could not get good amount, good results for that. So, and that's why we refined the classes into four main classes based on the pressure. And now we have a better way to train and validate the model. Uh, we have also came across this Detectron 2 API, which is provided by Facebook, which is an open source API. So it provides all the state of the art object detection models. So we can now, the idea is to try out the different object detection architectures that are already available and see which one performs best for our use case. Since this is completely application based one, so currently the idea is to just try out different models and see which one works the best for us. Uh, there's also this idea of trying different parameter settings like the, like I mentioned we have we are using the different bounding boxes here which is of 20 cross 20 but uh, we want to like we, we are open to like changing the bounding box size and see the results. Also the satellite images that we are using are mainly of 8 bit per pixel but uh, so the current idea is that if we take 32 bit per pixel images, then the size of the processing, it's too much. Like the data is heavy and like to process that data via GPUs, it's not feasible with the current set of GPUs available. So currently we are on the eight bit per pixel images, but we, we are trying to process it with like 16 bit per pixel and all. So that's the next step. So uh, currently, uh, like I mentioned, the first step, first stage, like doing it all the classes, it was unsuccessful. And that's why I do not have some kind of results to show here. Uh, but uh, yes, so after this, uh, there is also another idea to perform some kind of image regression thing. So what we can do here is to provide the image uh, as well as the, and label it with the center board coordinate. Uh, instead of a bounding box, we can just provide the center board coordinate and we we make the network to learn the relation between the image features and the center coordinate. So that each time you provide an image and the label of the center coordinate will learn. And then after that, if you provide just an image, it should be able to provide you the coordinates of the center. And after that, with the 20 cross 20 bounding box size, we can just create the bounding box and get the cycle. So till now, this is uh, what we have achieved and we hope to perform on this and the idea could be to combine the things like get the bounding box prediction as well and the center point coordinate prediction as well. So I think that could help us more and we are currently working on that. So uh, that's all from my side. Uh, I'm open to any questions or depends on that here. Thank you.
Thank you, Ashwin. Also a very interesting project.